Hi friends. So today I wanted to talk to you all a little bit about the industry as a whole, the film industry. Yes, it has changed a lot since I started in the industry and that was a long time ago, far, far away in another galaxy. <laughs> yes, it appears that. Um, but it has changed a lot. And I think the changes started to come about. People blame it on COVID. Mm, maybe, probably, could be. But the changes started coming before COVID. And it started with um, more or less technology. And it made it easier for actors to be able to self-tape and audition anywhere in the world that they wanted to and send out these auditions. And it made it easier for casting people and producers and directors because sometimes they're all in different areas, different states, different parts of the world, but yet they can all come together in a folder and review auditions. So that was already getting popular before COVID. I know people blame COVID. That probably had a little bit to do with it as well because we couldn't go out, we couldn't be in rooms with people. And then the whole Let's make tapes, self-tapes, um, and pass them back and forth to each other and make little short films during COVID. Um, that was fun. So those things existed then too. They're called COVID short films. Um, and there's some still out there. Um, so it's an interesting fact. But even though it has changed, and, and another thing that has changed it is reality TV. Reality TV and social media there are social media celebrities and stars and they have a huge following yes that does help yes they can make you a star they producers can look at you and go wow you have such a huge following if we put you in this it's going to make our ratings go way up because all your followers are going to go to that they're going to tag people they're going to be put it on social media it's going to blast the universe and that's super cool it's amazing because there's a lot of creatives on social media, TikTok, YouTube. Um, and I view a lot of them. I follow a lot of them because they're great. They're great to watch and I enjoy watching them. I'm not saying it's not a good thing because it is a good thing, you know. It is. However, I said all that to say this. You still need to have talent. You still need to recognize that there is a certain protocol, there's a certain process to becoming an actor. And it's not easy, it's not an easy path. Um, you, you need to have coaching and training. You need to go through the process of learning and being around others, uh, other professionals in the industry, other actors, be around producers and casting and uh, go to workshops and take notes from them. Learn as much as you can. And, and if you want to work on short films or documentaries or be on set as an extra, it's a great training ground as well. Um, because you learn. As long as you go to learn and watch, um, you can take notes and you can listen and hear and, and learn great things. These are all training protocols that you can do. But it's always best to have a coach that has been in the industry for many years and has worked in film and television that can guide you and help you um, through certain things that you may not be aware of or may not know. And I say all this because I've come across a lot of actors in the last few years who have worked on uh, television shows here that are very popular and they're known around the world. There's several series. They've gotten on these shows as extras, maybe a featured extra, and um, probably worked on it the whole eight or nine months it was here because they had a good look and, you know, they got on set because of that. A lot of them are like, oh, I have that look everybody wants because I know I can do it. I can be an actor from here on out. <laughs> okay. That is great to have that look. But working as an extra, even a featured extra, burns you from ever going on those series and getting a featured speaking role. Unless, by some miracle, 
the director likes you and says, hey, let's bring that person back in and put him in this little small role. I, it can happen. It's rare. It's very rare, but it can happen. So I'm not trying to distinguish anybody's dreams or thoughts of doing that. You just need to be careful and you know you need to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. Thank you, Kenny Rogers. Anyway, that just came to my head. I don't know why that popped in there. Um, okay, so that's true. You, you need to learn and you will learn and grow and learn and grow. But I'm trying to prevent a lot of mistakes that a lot of you are making and uh, especially newcomers, new actors that, and one I just met recently, um, has no acting experience whatsoever, but got somehow got on a, a job um, in another state and was they put him through training for a couple months and it was a show where he could sing and dance and do things and they trained him how to do all this and um, uh, somebody referred him and he contacted me and and said that he's good to go that he knows what to do he's an actor and he can do it he's got a great look he said I have a great look people just want to put me in front of the camera Okay, that's great. Once you get in front of the camera, what are you gonna do? Well, I've had training What for a month, two months. That's, you need, actually the training that you should get is for life. Your coaching is for life. Um, and it should be, it should be ongoing. You should continually, work on your skills and hone those skills because it takes practice. It takes time. If you go back and look at celebrities nowadays that are very popular, have been popular, look at their videotapes when they first started out. They're terrible. They're terrible. Um, but as they grew and learned and stayed with the protocol, the process of learning and growing um, in the industry, they, they learned. They learned how to hone in that craft and that skill and how to speak and how to mesmerize an audience. Um, and they do, and you will learn that. But if you come in thinking, well, I'm all about a bag of chips. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They like me. Yeah. That's no. Be open to what the professionals tell you and try to help you with. Listen to them take notice, take advice, but it's the ones that come and say, well, I've been booked on all these shows. I don't need it. I mean, I'm good. They like me. They're calling me back. I'm getting booked on this and this and this, but what are you getting booked as? Show me in the releases. Show me your theatrical releases. Show me your clips from the movie scenes. Show me what you got. Let's see it. I haven't had one come forward yet with that. So, I just wanted to share all this with you because it's becoming more and more and more. This is the Southern States. Yes, it is different here. Um, because you've worked on short films or documentaries or maybe even independents that are here or, you know, a big scale TV shows that are here. What have you done? What can you show us that you've done on those? Um, the clips. That's what we want to see. We want to see your acting ability and your skill and the quality of the film or TV show that you've worked on. Let's see that. And let's see that before you start saying, book debt. I'm on this. I'm on this. Oh, look. Hey, I'm over here. I'm on this. <laughs> um, wait till it comes out and then show us what you got. But always remember to coach and train. We need to be on that level here in Texas. And be up to par in our skills and our talents as an actor. Work on it. Work, work, work. Coach, coach, coach. Train, train, train. Whatever you have to do, learn. Okay? And keep growing and keep doing and listen to advice. Um, don't just talk over people in the profession who are trying to help you. Um, don't talk over them and say, well, I've done this and I've done this. You haven't shown us anything. You've talked. You've talked a lot. You post a lot, but we don't see anything um, of what you've done. So, I just wanted to share that with y'all. I'll be watching.
and I'll see you 